Yeah, uh, if there, I don't know that this is going to go anywhere under the current uh, structure of Michigan's uh, legislature. Legislature, but one thing I would like to see changed is there's a concept called core communities that is restricted to I don't know maybe two dozen cities around the state that are that are given the ability to do more things with with their business community. For example, in brownfields, in the township, we have a Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, which allows us to make use of that state legislation to clean up uh, contaminated, contaminated sites. And, uh, that's a good thing. It's, it, it removes a health hazard. It makes a parcel more saleable to businesses and all that. Okay? In a core community, you can use it not only for a contaminated site, but you can also use it if you have a business that is in what is considered a functionally obsolete facility. That would be, that would be an eligible use of the Brownfield Redevelopment Statute. Also, blight, if you have uh, areas that meet, I think it's federal HUD that defines what blight uh, means. But if you have an area that would meet those criteria, in a core community, you can use the brownfield law. In a township, and I would make a distinction between an urban township that has over 25,000 population <laughs> and, and the, more, the more rural upper peninsula uh, townships. Uh, the, the urban townships really should be given the opportunity to use some of the, some of the uh, tools that the legislature has created, but restricted to only core communities. So that's one thing I would like to see uh, changed. And that would be helpful. No, another area too that uh, has been helpful to small businesses is the whole uh, topic of public transportation. Mm -hmm. That's not something that you normally you know tie in with you know helping out small businesses. But here in Delta, we heard from a lot of businesses along the Saginaw corridor that they couldn't get workers to their stores or they couldn't get customers that wanted to come to their stores because we did not have good public transportation going throughout Delta Township. So that they knew that there were folks that wanted to come work for them, but they just really had no reliable, efficient, affordable way to get there. So by you know investing money and trying to find ways to expand public transit options in Delta Township, that was actually something that helped small businesses. You know, they were the ones behind it pushing for that to happen so that they would have that connection. Then you also had the hotels that uh, liked to, wanted to have transportation available to their guests who may not have a car when they're staying here. Um, so all of that kind of comes together. So that's another area that you normally don't think about when you're talking about economic development, but it kind of comes into a core area of government that we need to take care of and that's making sure that there's good, reliable public transportation for everybody. And then also to tie it into, you know, maybe even another topic we can move into at some point is that we found out that, you know, it's not just the small businesses that needed to have public transit. We had one of our tier one auto suppliers, one of those great factories, you know, and plants that we really wanted to have here to attract here and stuff. They were having a huge absenteeism problem. That they're having, you know, 40 or so or percent or more of their workers were not showing up, you know, on time when they were supposed to. And they, they discovered the problem was their employees did not have cars. So they didn't have the means to, you know, to get to work. So public transportation was a huge, op was a huge problem. Not just for, you know, you think in terms of the elderly needs that maybe, that maybe college students need it, maybe, okay, maybe the, the poor who can't buy cars, but here's employees of a tier one auto supplier, which are the great jobs that, you know, we're, we're shooting for, those types of jobs. And half of their employees could, they have a car somewhere because they couldn't afford it for, for, for whatever reasons. So, you know, making sure that there's transmit, transportation to get around to other places, uh, you know, is important. But then also tied to that, I think we need to have that wage conversation a little bit too, in terms of issues like minimum wage, you know. If we're creating good jobs where people can't afford to go out and buy the products that they're making, then that's a problem down the road that we need to really look at, you know, getting real wages to once again to start growing in this, in this country and, and in the local communities as well. 
the we the task uh, bipartisan task force that or caucus that I was talking about earlier is looking at the core your issue around the core communities versus and really that's about you know we already have a lot of infrastructure in the urban you know the more uh, we have a lot of the infrastructure and I mean this has actually been a problem I think Governor Milliken had a land use uh, issue and you know our agricultural land is really valuable and what we're doing is and when I ran for mayor the first time that's what I campaigned on was regional land use plan to protect our farming and keep because every time you build more infrastructure and expand out into uh, green fields, you it's just costing that much more money because then that's just more uh, systems to maintain. So we have done a lot of work. I, the question is, I know the brownfield credits program changed a lot, and they're doing this community revitalization program. So there, there's a lot of moving targets on that, but it is on our the Sense of Place Council did a presentation. They feel like there's some opportunities there. So. It is a bipartisan uh, caucus, so we're hoping to see some bipartisan legislation come out addressing that issue also. Good. Yeah, which is exciting. Yeah, so uh, moving a little bit more local, um, you know, we've hit on it a little bit, but what are some of the positive trends you've seen here in Eaton County? You know, in, in the recent years that have, that's been happening, that you've seen this is really incentivized or really made economic development uh, a booming structure in Eaton County itself. Well, I'll talk about the township, and uh, there's a concept that, that uh, is underappreciated. It's a, it's a matter of a cluster. It isn't so much that you want a business. You want a cluster of like businesses. And in uh, Delta Township, over the last few years, we've developed a pretty significant cluster of financial institutions. I think every credit union that does business in the greater Lansing area has an office here in Delta Township. The major banks, uh, uh, you know, Fifth Third, P and, uh, PNC, Bank of America, Chase, all have, all have branches here. We have a very significant cluster of dining establishments, restaurants from uh, Joanne's Diner that serves a good breakfast. The uh, owner owner operated like Dimitri's uh, to the to the uh, uh, Applebee's and those those kinds of facilities. Uh, lodging we have ample uh, opportunities for people. I would like to see a convention center get get created. Between, between the private sector and maybe some, some help with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, Crown Plaza, Hampton, you know, I mean, just a plethora of, of uh, facilities. So the, what has been developing in this, this township, and I'm not going to speak to Charlotte because they've been doing okay too, uh, but in, in this community, we have really built up a significant cluster of industries that make it so much nicer to live here. So that, that was, that's my little pitch on that yeah, question. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, I think when you talk about you know the positive things in Eaton County as far as uh, you know economically you know moving forward, clearly you know the, the General Motors you know turning around and having to be the biggest thing because you know we are still very closely tied to the auto industry you know we've done a lot of work to try to diversify and to bring in some of the other sectors that you know john mentioned the financial services sector and other areas and stuff but at the end of the day we still you know uh, uh, we're an auto town you know and, and that really is very important to us so having general motors survive and, and becoming strong again really everything else that's happening is paid off of that there's no way you can really get around that. You're seeing more plants coming. The Magna plant that just opened up last year in Delta, I think 700 and some new employees that they're talking about. They were talking about a second plant. I think that may be on hold right now. But but that just opened up. You know that the other suppliers that were already here are hiring and adding on new shifts. They're getting new contracts. You know the, the plants going to get new business. The General Motors plant. So. Keeping them strong really is going to have to be the center of that, and it's what's really turning everything else around because you know you're bringing more people in once again. That's why the the restaurants that you mentioned and stuff are starting to you know expand uh, well again because people got money in their pockets and people are going better. 
And you know, keeping that auto industry strong uh, is, is important. You know, we're seeing the housing uh, pick up once again. Uh, a lot of new constructions went on. A lot of the subdivisions that kind of just stalled out, you know, during the recession after the housing bubble burst are all coming in now with plans for stage two, stage three, and you know, starting to expand and take off again. So I think that that continued growth, if we can see the economy continue to go, the auto industry continue to stay strong, I think we're gonna see, you know, the housing continue to pick up, the, you know, the, the you know, commercial businesses are gonna to continue to, you know, do well. So then we need to, while uh, things are strong, we need to continue to look at, you know, keep it you know that pressure to diversify so we're not as reliant on the auto industry as great as it is and how much we want to see toy we need to make sure that we bring in other businesses so we don't you know move up and down you know with the, with the cycles of the auto industry and john mentioned the financial services cluster you know that's one of the things that we're working on regionally here in the capital region you know we have auto owners insurance which is headquartered in delta township we're proud of that we worked with them just recently at the beginning of my term to to help them expand so that they would stay here for a long time to come. And they opened up, they bought the old uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield building that had been vacated. And you know they, they started their second campus for their headquarters. So that guarantees they're gonna be here, keep those jobs here for a uh, good period of time. You know, in other parts of our region, we saw you know the accident fund, you know, is doing really great. Downtown Lansing, you, know, you have adult dental. We need to, you know, play off that and start recruiting other uh, financial and insurance related businesses out there and get them to come to the capital region here to locate. So that's one of the things that we're all focusing on, working collectively through the Lansing Economic uh, uh, economic Area Partnership to you know, sell the whole regions. But focus on, just not on anybody who wants to come here, but focus on reaching out to things like the insurance sector and the financial services where there's you can make the case and why it's good to locate here because you have those clusters that John sure. talked about on how important that is and you've got the talent pool with those types of skills all kind of concentrated in this area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. So I think it's the common theme that we all kind of sit and, and talk about economic development, but everyday people like our folks in the audience, we never really know how to get involved in it. And we never know what, what our place is and what we can do. So I just a question, you know, what can everyday people do to help positively impact our, our development, our, our small businesses? What can we do as, as people in the audience or as someone like myself to actually help in this process? Is there something, anything happening at Delta that I can involved with or in a grander level, what, what can an everyday person do to help with this issue? Well, I would say as far as, you know, what you can do, you know, in Delta is get involved in the community and get involved in the activities of the township. John mentioned, you know, we have the Delta Side Business Association. If you're a business, make sure that you are active and you're part of that. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce has monthly meetings as well, you know, what folks should be involved and participate in that, where we can all come together and, and talk about those issues. But in terms of uh, an average citizen and how you can help, I think that you can play a role in those quality of life issues. We have a Delta, we just started not too long ago, a new senior council. Uh, and the idea is to take those active seniors who are living in the community that, you know, still have a lot to give back. You know, it's not just a social group. You know, we, we have that. We have those type of programs for folks who want to take part in that. But the idea of the senior council are to get those who want to be active to, to see what can we do to help improve our community. One of the projects they're working on putting together the master list of projects, but one of the things they talked about was helping build neighborhood watch associations in each neighborhood throughout the township. That gets back to if you keep strong neighborhoods, that keeps people wanting to move into the community, that keeps your local stores strong because they've got the customers, that attracts the factories because there's the talent pool that they need to hire. So a local person by getting involved in you know, your senior council, you're helping the economic development because you're helping the <coughs> strong. Um, there's also, you know, other avenues, you know, through the schools, I know both the Wither, Waverly schools and the Grand Ledge schools have foundations that work to support those schools. Having, you know, Gretchen mentioned that, you know, the schools was so important to the city where she was mayor. That, that applies to any community, you know, if you don't have 
a strong school system, then your community is going to start suffering. So getting involved as a parent, as a member of the community, as just a you know a citizen, getting involved in those school foundations, or if you have kids involved in your school, get involved in the PTOs and the other activities that can you know keep those schools strong, keep them viable, to make sure that they remain places that people are going to want to move to, so that they can put their kids in those school districts. So those are a couple of good ways that people can get involved and be active. There's a literature on, on this subject. Uh, Vicki Luther was the primary author that did a study of a number of communities in, in the Midwest and asked the question, what makes a viable community? And one of the major conclusions that she reached was uh, events. That if you have the uh, Memorial Day parade, you have the Fourth of July community picnic, you have the Labor Day uh, chicken barbecue, you have the 5K run. What happens is that, first of all, it creates a sense of community, that you're doing something together as a community. Secondly, it also affords an opportunity to develop the talent that gets involved in the community. Take a 5K run and get somebody that gets involved the first year. Okay, your job is to hand out the water at the, at the you know, halfway point. That you, you just hold out a, a jug of water and let the runners grab it as they go by. A couple years later, can you organize the t-shirts for the people that are going to be doing the run? And what happens is that you get people involved in the community, they get some responsibility, they show that they are, are dedicated to the community, and they get interested in and you develop the talent pool that, sorry, that may run for office <laughs> and, and uh, really get involved. So having, having events is a, is a really important thing. And so playing softball is a good thing. It really does help you. Know, and Ken's going to tell us about all the nice events that we have in our township. <laughs> You know, I, I'll jokingly say, you know, people have talked for a long time, we don't have any parades in Delta Township. You know, your parade goes down your Main Street. Well, our Main Street is sacked on highway. <laughs> and first of all, the state would not allow us to shut it down for a parade. And if we did try to do that, you'd have traffic backed up for probably 10 miles in each direction when the parade went through. So, you know, that, that's one of the things that does make it a little hard to create some, some you know, community when you're on in townships like that stuff. But, you know, we do do a lot of uh, uh, community building type events like the Delta Rocks Festival, a uh, family festival, which takes place uh, uh, towards late June every year. We have one of the big, biggest fireworks celebrations on uh, July 3rd um, uh, of each year, so that always draws a lot of people into our community as well. We have a lot of activities that's uh, related to the library. They have a lot of uh, 5K races and other events that go on throughout the year that bring people in as well. We have, you know, obviously a, a fantastic Parks and Recreation Department. They have a lot of, you know, classes and programs and, and uh, athletic uh, opportunities for people to get involved with. So that's uh, definitely something that we're spending uh, attention on, trying to find a way to create more of those community events that can help create that sense of, you know, purpose and identity. Well, I would totally agree. Actually, that's how I got involved in politics. <laughs> I moved to Celine and uh, volunteered to help raise money for a rec center that we ended up building. And, um, and one thing led to another, and then, you know, I, ran, I was asked to run for office for city council because I just got involved more and more in the community. So I totally agree with you, and I would say that it's a great privilege to represent people um, in whatever capacity as a volunteer or as an elected official. Uh, it's a, a really great privilege to help other people and help your community be better and stronger work with people so I totally support that from your initial question my first uh, thought was shop local I really strongly believe in that uh, I think a lot of small businesses locally are always struggling especially with the internet and I think the internet's an important tool but I think a lot of times we do things out of convenience instead of thinking about what our local business owners our, our needs are and they're really our neighbors and they're trying to raise a family just like we are and you know uh, I think that would be a really uh, great thing to be more thoughtful about how we spend our money. And I also agree with the events. I, the mayor that mentored me and asked me to run for city council said it's always about a sense of community. And, I, and he really taught me a lot. And that was 
one of the main things that I've always really, uh, and I guess I was raised that way anyhow, but it's always about, you know, it's about us and looking out for each other and the community can vary to maybe your not, uh, uh, service club community or your school community or your church community, but those communities are what connect people and make people, help people look out for each other and invest in each other in the community. So I think that's what makes your township strong because you guys have a very active and very involved community, and but it can always, it can always, there's always room for improvement, right? <laughs> so, but the most important thing is to get involved, right? And get, get, you know, make a difference, and get involved. My father and I say, pick something and do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> Wonderful. So we wanted to give uh, our audience the opportunity to ask questions or have any comments for for our panelists or just to have a conversation amongst themselves is if anyone at this time you guys have questions or want to ask anything to anyone out here or about the community, feel free to raise your hand and we'll go over here first. Um, I have listened to all the good stuff that's going on around. Very happy. Um, I see it. I think you live in the Delta Town, Township. You're all doing really very well, I think. I'm wondering about your outreach to media and how do we get the word out, not only for the townships, but for state government, that state government, local governments have a useful place in society. Um, I get a little tired of reading about MDOT's auditing problems. I want to hear about some of the stuff that the state does that's necessary, about its court systems that are good, about all the good things that are going on in government, not always this sour space. Uh, so I'd be happy to talk about that because as uh, I was mayor for a city for 14 years, and it's a, it was a continual struggle to talk about, you know, well, not to talk about it, but to have people hear the things that we do. So we would do a survey every other year in our community to ask people what. They thought, and we would also talk about certain infrastructure issue areas that you, you might do something like that similarly here, where there are areas, you know, as part of building and supporting a community, you have to do the present day planning and then also a long term thought. So, really bringing the community members involved, get them involved and engaged. And so, we did things like uh, surveys, we had a website very early on when the internet first was uh, getting popular, um, and really tried to find ways to communicate. To put, as much possible, you know, our budget, everything was always on to really to engage uh, the community members. So I think the higher up you go, the more difficult it is to communicate with constituents. Of course, as a legislator, I have all the tools like the Facebook page, the legislative page, but you know, that's people have to want to go and you know read that. So it is it is very challenging time, and we do work with the media. And I, I remember I was on a group called Machine Association of Mayors, and we would have luncheons and talk about challenges and one of the things we talked about, we had a media panel one time and they were talking about how to relate to media and they said, well, we really want to talk to you. And I remember one of the mayors of the city in my, uh, Washington County said, well, we had this really great audit. It was the first time we had, a, it was a community that had been struggling for a number of years. And she said, this is the first time we've had this great audit in you know, 15 years and nothing was in the press. She said, how, you know, how come that doesn't come out when we were really hard and we were fixing things? And they, they did say, well, you know, that the negative stuff tends to resonate more with people. So I think it's just a continual effort um, to get the word out. When I first became mayor in Celine, we televised. We were, we, I wanted to be on TV when I was on city council, and the, the leadership didn't want to. So by the time I got to be elected to be mayor, that was what we did. And that was another good way. Uh, I think, really, it's, there's a lot of stuff coming in front of people all the time now with all the different... Um, messaging environment. So I think TV is also another great way to communicate. I know I had a lot of seniors that told me that they would watch it every week uh, to find out what was going on. So I, I think there's always going to be some other alternative, right? So I think now you can do the internet. There's um, ways to live stream on the internet. Um, so there's a lot of different, different tools, but yeah. again, you can take them. You can only do so much that you have to want to hear it, right? Now it's a, it's a challenge that we have, you know, we, 